Well, hi, I'm Dakota, and I'd first the first point I'd like to make is kind of restating the central point of the central reason for the banning of assault weapons is not in general to lessen the amount of general crime, of general violent crimes and crimes committed with firearms, but the main point of the ban was in response to the mass shootings and to help I, to not only diminish the amount of mass shootings, but mainly to try and diminish the number of individual deaths in those individual mass shootings. According to um, Christopher Ingram, reporting for the Washington Post, there the original the original intent of the ban is for the original intent of the assault weapons ban was to reduce the carnage of deadly shootings. This basically was he's basically saying that with assault weapons it was more it was it is easier for people to go on larger killing sprees. There, it may be more likely for a person to be killed with somebody else's bare hands or with a knife than with a, an assault weapon, but it is easier for a person to kill many people in one individual instance with an assault weapon than with them being armed with just a knife. Next, I'd also like to bring up the actual bill itself. The firearm, the um, assault weapons ban covered um, a multiple different models of weapons such as AKs, Uzis, the Colt AR-15, the SW, SWD Mac Type M10, M11, and M12, the Intratech Tech 9, Tech DC9, Tech 22, and um, revolving cylinder sh shotguns such as the Street Sweeper and Striker 12. Now, the ban does specifically name certain weapons. There is also a point in the ban talking about any similar firearms or any functional copies of these firearms. So there is no way for somebody to say, oh, well my gun isn't the AR-15, it is a gun that is similar, but it's a different name, so it's not on the ban list. The ban list actually covers that later down, saying that any functional copies of these weapons would also be banned. The other, another part of the ban itself talks about the requirements of being a, an assault weapon in the context to semi-automatic rifles. It had to have multiple from a few of the following, such as a folding or telescoping stock, a pistol grip, a bayonet mount, a flash suppressor, a threaded barrel, or a, um, an attached great grenade launcher. So there are a few things that would keep something from being considered an assault weapon if it was not already named, but many of the most common ones already were named and any functional copies of those were also used. Now I would also next like to bring up the fact that the assault weapons ban actually did continue to help decrease or keep the number of a mass shootings down while it was in effect. Between the years of 1990 and 2004, there were 118 mass shootings, according to the Century Foundation. That is about 1.13 mass shooting events per year on average. In while the um, while the assault weapons ban was in effect, there were 28 mass shootings. Or since in the years during the um, the, the, while the ban was in place from September 1994 to September 2004, there were 15 mass shootings event, which averages to about 1.5%. Now this may seem like it was, it, the ban kept it, from, kept it from increasing, because in the years leading up to the ban, the number of mass shootings had actually been increasing, with there being, after, um, after the ban was removed, there have been about 52 mass shootings since 2004, which is about 3.71 mass shootings per year, which is drastically increased since the ban was removed. So the ban itself may not have been actually lowering the number of individual mass shootings, but it was keeping the number of mass shootings from increasing over time. I would also like to bring up the fact that Several other, many other countries have had similar mass shootings to America. Most of these countries, however, have, once there have been mass shootings, gone and responded, such as Canada, Australia, Israel, the United Kingdom, Norway, and Japan. Once those countries all had a mass shooting event, 
many of them were quick to respond with some form of legal action in response to this, trying to limit the amount of continued mass shootings that are going to happen in these countries. I'd also like to bring up the fact that in, um, according again to the Washington Post, another, um, another one of their articles, of the 18 most deadly shootings in the world since, in like most deadly mass shootings that were not involved in an actual like war event, of the 18 most recent since, eight, since 1982, America has been involved in seven of them, with any other country being on the list only appearing once, because once they have a large scale mass shooting, they then have a response and try and stop the problem, whereas America has continued to let the problem exist and has not taken active responses to there being um, to there being mass shootings. So the America has failed to respond adequately and an assault weapons ban would be a start to responding instead of us continuing to ignore the fact that there is a problem with America and mass shootings. Now I would like to bring up a, um, a uh, article by, by Rick Noack. He talks about how in um, <coughs> In Norway, when there was the, the most recent mass shooting in Norway, um, as soon as there was an issue brought up to the state, most uh, to the um, to the uh, national government, they brought they almost immediately put into effect laws that were going to limit the weapons used in those mass shootings. The, um, he also brings up the point that the main reason why the United States does not have anything similar, has never had anything similar, is because groups like the NRA and the gun lobby are continuing to stop us from being able to put into effect laws that would in turn help the United States with the issue of mass shootings.